Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Let us talk about immunity for life sciences grade 11. This is all under the topic of biodiversity of microorganisms. So now, uh, just to let you know, immunity is not something complicated. It is something that you already know. Sometimes it is possible that um, you, you, you start falling sick or you start coughing. And then after four days, you are fine without drinking any pills. You are already healed. So now we need to know how is the body able to defend itself against infection. So that concept is known as immunity. So immunity, it is the way in which a plant or an animal is able to fight an infection because a plant or an animal is able to fight an infection naturally. Okay. If you start coughing right now, pass by flu, what you're gonna have, what's gonna happen to you? That flu is going to, um, you're probably gonna heal after five days. And then now you ask yourself, how did you heal? It is because you have immunity. So now uh, this is known as immunity. Immunity, it is the way in which a plant or an animal is able to fight an infection. So a plant can fight an infection, an animal can also fight an infection. Plants can also get infected. Uh, you can see sometimes when you are planting maize and you start seeing that it is having brown leaves, what is happening there? It is infected. So now uh, plants have got their way of defending themselves, uh, their way of defending themselves. So let us look at how do plants defend themselves against infection. I remember that first um, infection, this word infection or disease it is caused by this thing known as pathogens i remember pathogens are just small microorganisms that can cause disease pathogens are just those microorganisms that are, that do what that cause diseases microorganism that cause diseases so if a pathogen enters into a body of a plant or a human being that plant or human being is going to get infected so when you say that you are sick, it means that a pathogen has infected you. Yes. So now in plants, we have got uh, two lines of defense and immunity. We have got a first line of defense. So a first line of defense, um, it is the one whereby uh, it, is the, it is the defense of a plant that protects them from microorganisms. It protects them uh, it protects the pathogens from entering the plant so we say it is a first line defense because it is protecting pathogens from entering all right so now if there is a bacteria or maybe um microorganisms that can cause disease or the pathogens that can cause disease the moment they try to enter into a plant there is a first line of defense which is a wax cuticle a bark uh, which secretes sticky gums do you know that a wax cuticle it is just that layer that uh, surrounds the what um that surrounds the leaves especially the leaves of the plant so now a wax cuticle also prevents water loss as well so just know that a wax cuticle and the sticky gums of a plant will defend microorganisms from entering you can see sometimes trees um can have those sticky things that look like glue or honey or mucus, something that looks like glue outside a tree. That is a first line of defense. That is a first line of defense for plants. The sticky gums protect or prevent uh, pathogens from entering. So first line defense is associated with preventing pathogens from entering. Then now we have got a second line defense. This is known as a second line. So a second line of defense in plants, it is, a, it is the immune response when the plant is already infected by the pathogens. So let's say, for example, the pathogens were successful in entering the plant. So now, now that they've entered, the plant has got a second line of defense, and that is to release chemicals such as salicylic acid. But then you just have to say that um, a plant releases chemicals so if they ask you to explain or to describe the immunity in plants you say that plants have got a first line of defense that prevent my pathogens from entering 
such as the works cuticle and the sticky gums okay and then now you say a plant also has got um also has got a second line of defense a second line of defense it is the one that works only if or only when the pathogens have entered remember the pathogens are the microorganisms that are causing the disease so uh, the second line of defense only is is only active when the what when the pathogens have already entered in the what in that particular plant so this is how it goes this is how it works so in animals immunity it is divided into two types we have got natural immunity we have got acquired immunity these are the two types of uh, immunity we've got natural and acquired we want to talk about acquired later but uh, let us um, first start with the natural immunity so the natural immunity is that immunity that is present at birth so do you see all these words that i've written in bold or highlighted in bold these black dark words those are very important you need to know them because when you answer questions when they ask anything about natural immunity you know that the immunity is present at birth when you are born you have immunity okay when you are born you have immunity you have a defense in your body so when you are born your body is able to defend you against diseases that is known as a natural immunity remember immunity is what it is just the way in which a plant or an animal is able to fight an infection so now naturally your body when you are born you have got immunity you are able your body is able to fight against pathogens okay so natural immunity it is present mm. at birth it develops only when you are exposed to pathogens so now the moment you are exposed to pathogens let us just say maybe some uh, some bacteria enter your body in a way or maybe some viruses enter your body so now what why, 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 what immunity is active in your body it is known as acquired immunity so acquired immunity develops only when the pathogens have uh, you have been exposed to pathogens or maybe the pathogens have entered into you but natural immunity it is the one that is present at birth so the first line of defense in human beings it prevents pathogens from entering it is the same thing as the plant defense okay so in animals the first line the first line of defense the one that defend it is the one that defends you or that prevents pathogens from entering your body okay so when someone is a virus and maybe that virus uh, wants to enter your body the first line of defense will defend you from the virus entering the body or maybe a bacteria trying to enter your body or maybe some germs trying to enter your body the first line of defense prevents those pathogens from entering all right so in humans you should just know these three these are the most important tears mucus earwax these are the examples of the first line of defense in humans remember that in plants the plants secrete those sticky gums the one that look like glue okay to prevent pathogens from entering but as you in humans or in animals let's just say animals have got tears mucus earwax that is the first line of defense that prevents pathogens from entering okay sometimes when your tears start flowing out not when you are crying let's just say your tears um or maybe let us just say you are in an environment where there is a lot of smoke and then you you start seeing tears flowing down your eyes okay let me just say that yes the tears flowing out of your eyes in a sense so those tears are actually trying to do what they are actually trying to prevent pathogens from entering okay so that is why whenever uh, you are exposed to some conditions you see yourself as uh, a uh, sort of crying in a way you just see tears flowing down your cheeks okay it is because those tears are preventing the pathogens or the organisms that cause disease the pathogens remember are those organisms those microorganisms those small organisms that we cannot see but they can cause diseases okay so the moment uh, the moment when they are trying to enter your body 
the tears will be secreted. The mucus, mucus, it is that uh, thing that comes out of your nose, the one that you, you, yeah, the one that you are disgusted with, yes, that one. Ear wax, ear wax, it is the one that comes out of your ears, okay? So in your ear, you can see that you have got those brown things, that brown wax, it is known as ear wax. So the ear wax prevents pathogens from entering the ears. The mucus prevents pathogens from entering the what? The, 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 the nose, the tears will prevent pathogens from entering the what? The eyes. Okay, so this is known as the first line of defense for you animals. It is the one that protects pathogens from entering. It, pro it prevents, prevents. So now let's look at uh, the second line of defense when pathogens enter. Okay, remember that the second line of defense in immunity, it is that defense when pathogens have already entered the animal okay let us just say now a virus has already entered in your body or maybe a um, let's just say for example influenza virus the one that causes you to cough the flu yes that that's a virus so when influenza vir virus enters your body it's already entered remember a virus is a pathogen right is a microorganism that causes disease so even when bacteria or a virus or some germs enter your body the line of defense that will be used it is the second line so please know how to differentiate the first line of defense it is used to prevent pathogens from entering whereas the second line of defense uh, it does what it only it is only active or it works when the pathogens have already entered so we have got a primary response and a secondary response under the second line of defense so when pathogens have already entered the primary response tries to destroy so it tries to destroy the pathogen and prevent it from from um from spreading so now that the pathogens have entered your body, your body's primary response, which falls under the second line of defense, will try to destroy the pathogen. It will try to destroy. Remember that the pathogen is making you to be sick. It's bringing diseases in your body. So now that it has entered, the second line of defense has got what, in, what is known as a primary response. It tries to destroy the pathogen. It tries to destroy that microorganism that can cause the disease. And it prevents it from spreading throughout the body. Remember that microorganisms, once they enter in your body, they spread to many places, okay? Yes. So now the primary response tries to destroy it and prevent it from spreading. So for example, swelling and redness. When you see uh, you, are, you are starting to swell, let's just say, for example, swelling just means that your skin is um, sort of becoming swollen. I, I should have put a picture here. But then in Isizul, uvuvuga, uvuvuga, swelling, redding, redness, redness. When you see that uh, parts of your skin are red or something like that, it is the primary response. It is your body that is trying to destroy the what? The pathogen. Sometimes when you are bit by a mosquito, or maybe when you are bit by, uh, by, by those small onion animals, okay, when, you, when they bite you, you can see that your skin becomes swollen. Or maybe a bee in your skin, when it bites you, what will happen? Uh, your, your skin will be swollen, right? Yes, and it will be red. Why is it becoming red? It is because your body is trying to destroy destroy the pathogen and prevent it from spreading. I hope we understand. Then now we've got a secondary response. It is the one that destroys pathogens. This one destroys pathogens. It does not try to destroy. It destroys the pathogens. Okay? So once the primary response tries to destroy, the secondary response will destroy it definitely. Okay? So your body will kill that particular bacteria that particular virus that is why i say when you when you when you get uh, infected by flu right now in four days time you'll be healed okay sometimes you'll be healed in 10 days time but then your body can heal itself against flu why it is because of this whole immunity 
So once the flu has entered you, the virus, the influenza virus, a pathogen, once it enters you, what will happen? The body's primary response will try to destroy the pathogen. pathogen. After that, the secondary response will definitely destroy it. The other thing, the secondary response, it holds a memory of the pathogen so that it cannot invade again. All right. So now when a pathogen enters your body, let's just say now a virus. This is a virus inside your body. This is your body. And then there's a virus inside. When it enters, um, the secondary response holds a memory of it like your response in the body will recognize it and it will keep it in its mind in a sense so that next time when the same virus comes again it will be easy to destroy so that it cannot invade again so the secondary response uh, the secondary response of the second line defense of your immune system um, it destroys the pathogens but then it definitely holds a memory of how the pathogen looks like so that when the same pathogen enters or attacks again your body, it will be able to destroy it quickly. Okay, so a secondary response destroys the pathogens and holds a memory of the pathogen so that it cannot invade again. So now let us look at um, the antibodies. So now the antibodies are part of the natural uh, in immunity. Remember, we said that the secondary response destroys patho pathogens. Now we want to know how do they destroy pathogens. So now to destroy a pathogen, there are certain proteins known as antibodies. So antibodies, antibodies are just proteins. These are proteins. And those proteins, they destroy germs. Okay? They destroy germs. And then when they encounter the same germ again, they respond quickly. As I have said in the previous slide here that uh, the secondary response will destroy the pathogen. How will it destroy the pathogen? It will send these proteins that are known as what? As antibodies. So the antibodies, these antibodies are the proteins that are, are, are that, that, that attack or that destroy a particular a particular pathogen, a particular microorganism that can cause disease, it is destroyed by those proteins that are known as antibodies. So antibodies destroy a what? Destroy a pathogen. So they attack and they destroy it. And the other thing, remember we've said that it holds a memory of the pathogen, right? So when they encounter the same germ again, when the pathogen attacks again, they respond quickly those antibodies are secreted quickly. So the other thing we need to know is that the antibodies, they are produced by the cells known as lymphocytes. So lymphocytes, we have done them in grade 10, I remember. So now we have done lymphocytes in grade 10. You don't really need to know much detail about them in grade 11. Just know that the lymphocytes are the specialized cells or the tissues that produce antibodies. So antibodies are produced by cells known as lymphocytes. So if they ask, name the specialized cells that produce antibodies. The cells that produce those proteins, they are known as lymphocytes. Please do not forget this. So they form part of the natural immunity because you are born with it. Whenever a pathogen enters your body, an antibody will be secreted to destroy the pathogen. It will be secreted by the secondary response. So now the acquired immunity, remember we've said that it is the one that develops when you are exposed to pathogens. So now sometimes some pathogens are not easy to destroy using antibodies. Let us just say, for example, we are talking about HIV virus, HIV. HIV virus, when it enters in, into, your, in, into your body, it's fine. We, we, we say that immunity kills or destroys uh, pathogens, but certain, certain viruses are stronger in a sense. So they cannot be just destroyed by your natural immunity. So now we have to artificially acquire, we have to artificially acquire immunity. When you say artificially, it just means that we are, we are it's not natural. It is not natural. 
So we are acquiring. The word acquire just means we are getting. So how do you get immunity? Because naturally you don't have your immunity in the body. It is not enough to destroy things such as HIV virus. Okay. So it is not enough to destroy certain what? Certain um certain pathogens that are strong. So now that is where we use this thing known as a vaccine. So a vaccine is a suspension of dead, weakened microorganisms that will stimulate the body to produce antibodies. So this is known as a vaccine and it is a form of artificially acquired immunity because remember that uh, what causes the body to release antibodies? It is because a pathogen has entered. A pathogen is what? Has entered. So when a pathogen enters, the body secretes antibodies. So how does a vaccine work with antibodies? A vaccine is a suspension of dead, weakened microorganisms. So when they are vaccinating you, they are actually inserting dead microorganisms into your body. Don't be scared, but then that vaccine that you can receive, it is a suspension of dead, weakened, microorganisms so they insert microorganisms into your body but then those microorganisms they are weakened they are not pathogenic they cannot cause you to feel disease remember that a vaccine is trying to heal you not to kill you right so now the thing is when you insert dead weakened microorganisms let us just say this is an injection this is your injection that you are about to receive so this injection will have microorganisms inside. It can be virus, it can be bacteria, all those microorganisms, they will be in the injection, but then they will be dead. It will be dead. They won't be alive because they can harm you if they are alive. Remember that uh, their disease is caused by microorganisms, right? So they are dead. These are dead microorganisms inside the vaccine. Dead microorganisms. Uh, it is dead microorganisms in your po in the vaccine. So this is your vaccine. So now why do we put dead microorganisms? It is because we want to stimulate the body to produce antibodies. And remember that antibodies are only produced when the pathogens enter the body. So now when you are inserting them using a vaccine, the body will be stimulated to produce more antibodies. And then when they produce more antibodies, now those antibodies will be able to fight the pathogens in your body. Let's just say, for example, I I, I flu and then I go to a clinic. They're going to inject me with a, with a vaccine. So in the vaccine, what are they injecting me with? They're actually injecting me with dead microorganisms. And then those the moment my body realizes that they are dead microorganisms, it will be stimulated it will be it will be forced to 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 produce more antibodies in my body so it will be forced to produce those proteins that will destroy the real pathogens in my body but then that dead weakened those dead weakened microorganisms they cannot harm me instead they just stimulate or they just cause my body to secrete more to secrete more antibodies so that when real pathogens are in my body, they're going to be destroyed. Remember, the purpose for antibodies it is to destroy pathogens. So that's it about antibodies and, uh, and immunity. I hope this was understandable. Thank you for watching. If you have got any suggestion or any comment, please comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. Tell your friends to stay tuned.